down bottom. Okay. I call upon my guides, angels, and ascended masters to allow this talk with Maria to go in the way that it should, so that all my answers come from deep inside, from the core of me, from my soul, rather than just from the top of my head, so I can deliver myself as the person that I truly am. And I can then show people who I am from my core. So I ask that my guides, angels and ascended masters work with me to take me in the right direction for this talk. Thank you. Mm. Okay, I'm ready. Wow. Thank you so much. I am ready also. And I feel very, very strongly connected to you. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, Maria. Right. So, so lovely too. Hey. Oh, hold on. Let me just get through the thing. I'll edit that out. That figures. As a matter of fact, I'm going to unplug this real quick. I always forget to do that. Okay. So let me do the intro. Hey, it's Maria with another episode of the Everyday Heroine. Today, we have Claire Wilkinson as our guest on the show. Hey, Claire. Hi, Maria. So happy you to have, be here. Thank you. So happy to have you. You have been invited to the show because you are an everyday heroine. I met you inside a networking community and I immediately gravitated toward your positive and outgoing energy. I instantly became a fan as soon as I listened to your lovely accent. But most importantly, I became a fan because of the super heroic things that you stand for, like your love for yoga and meditation and aligning with your inner self. The more I get to know you, I love your big proud mama love for your daughters, nature, and your dog Suki. I've been on your clubhouse gatherings and I just cannot get enough of your soothing voice and the soothing message you deliver to the world. Welcome to the show. Why, thank you, Maria. What a beautiful introduction. <laughs> thank you. Can you share the story with our audience of how you started your business and career with yoga and meditation? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I've always, I, I'd say not always, um, I started. I started my journey in yoga um, really as a student about twenty-five years ago. Just you know, doing random classes, which I, I used to love, but it was never really sort of part of my everyday life. Um, but then I started going to India a lot, and when I started doing classes with Indian teachers or even teachers that were just based out in India. It was just a whole game changer. And, you know, you just get to feel more of a, a spiritual connection rather than just the going through the asanas, going through the postures, just as a, you know, an everyday exercise, which I kind of experienced in London. So as time went on, I started to bring it more into my life. But I was also working as, I, I owned a, a business in central London, which was completely separate to um, this kind of lifestyle that I've got now. But it did enable me to have a lot of time off. So I, I did continue to um, travel to other parts of Asia as well, and just really getting used to working with different teachers. Then um, I would say about 14 years ago, perhaps 12, I went through a bit of a sticky patch in my life. 
And I was at a bit of a, a low ebb, you know, what it's like. It was the end of a long-term relationship and um, other parts of my life were changing as well. And I just started to feel a little bit uh, lost and just actually a little bit down as well. And then a dear friend of mine invited me on a retreat and I went on this retreat and it was, it, it just completely changed everything for me. It was a, a detox retreat. It was two hours of yoga in the morning, the same in the afternoon. We did um, lots of meditation. We also did lots of holistic treatments like Reiki and there was um, some sort of um, reflexology you could do, but there was also this like magnetic treatment that you could do, which I've never had done since, but at the time it's really amazing. But basically the point that I'm trying to make was the, the days that we were there just completely immersing ourselves into this retreat, just just made this massive shift inside of me and so I then came away from the retreat just feeling really a different person and so I continued on this journey I then went on another retreat which was abroad with a very um, brilliant teacher and that then just took me to a whole different level I did um, a past life regression. I did all sorts of different work as well with him, as well as you know the yoga, the meditation, and just completely immersed myself in the whole of the weeks retreat that you know and all the work that was given. And I can honestly say, by the time I came back from that retreat, I, I really was like a different person. I, you know, I mean, I've always had a very happy life. I've always you know been relatively lucky in my life, but like anybody, you've got insecurities inside. You know, I used to have certain hangups. I used to feel a little bit um, insecure about myself, my looks, just, you know, just little aspects about myself and a little bit self-conscious in certain situations. And then after all this work that I'd done, suddenly I didn't feel like that anymore. I, you know, before I'd always make a huge effort to go out, always my hair, my makeup done. And, you know, unless I didn't, I never felt right. Whereas now I could just, you know, pop out in my yoga pants, no makeup. And actually it's, I, I just didn't care. It's not that I didn't care. It's just that I didn't need to care anymore. I just felt really free about who I was from the inside rather than this outer shell. And then after that, that's when I started training as a yoga teacher. And I've been working as a, a Reiki ma master um, over the years for I think maybe 10 years before that but this was just adding different layers on one after the other after the other after the other the more I was adding on the more I was working with my inner self and taking away the layers that just didn't serve me anymore um, I hope that's making sense to you Oh, absolutely. Um, <laughs> to me, yeah. it does. Yes. Yeah. You know, just to be um, honest, like a lot of people that might be listening, um, cause I, I was on a similar path. So I get that whenever you're like, man, something just feels off, you know, and you can't make yeah. sense of it, but you know, it sounds like your time in India and all these other places, like you were doing a lot of different things like past life regression, like that's wow, gotta yeah. be blowing <laughs> some people's mind. Um, so yeah, yeah, so just continue. I love it. I love it. Well, so so basically it, it was like, it's quite a weird sense. Yeah, and it, it's quite hard to put out to other people. And But if I close my eyes and I just feel it from the experience that I have from a very deep place, how I would explain it is that um, it's like, I stepped back into who I really was. So when we're born, we're born as this neutral being, yeah, this neutral soul. We then have parents that condition us in a certain way, which could be good, it might not be. I mean, I'm, I've been very lucky with my parents, I'm, I have to say. Um, but then you start going to school and you're told how to sit and how to stand and don't talk and don't do this. And then you then you've got friends at school and you know what how cruel children can be at school and that can you know have a really negative effect on you you know I don't like the look of her and look at her and then you can have that hang up or oh she's look what she's wearing today then you have a hang up about what sort of clothes you wear you know and this is all carried as an extra layer taken on then you know then as you 
you know, you get a career that might not be the career that's right for you, but it's like you feel like you should be in that career or do these studies, you know, and every step that you take in every path, unless you're really lucky, usually isn't the right path for you. It's not the one that sits right with you, but it's the one that you, you feel like you should be in. Then you start having relationships. Well, then that really is a whole, um, uh, you know, that can really send you down some spirals. It can put you up some highs, but let's face it, it can send you down some spirals as well. And, you know, by the time you're doing all these things, sometimes you get to the end and it's like, who am I? What path am I on? This isn't me. And you're so far away from that little soul that you were when you were born. And you, you, it's like, oh my gosh. Um, and that's how then a lot of people can start to get stressed. You know, they start to just feel wrong about everything that people start drinking, doing drugs. I mean, there's all sorts of different avenues you can then start to go down in the wrong way. Yeah. And I was really lucky that by stepping into, you know, having this, I feel like it was a gift of being introduced to all of this work. I mean, I was never in a really bad place, but I just, I knew something wasn't right for me. I just didn't sit right. I didn't feel right. Suddenly, it's like everything just aligned. And like I say, then it didn't matter how I looked, how I, you know, carried myself. It's just, I felt okay inside. And for many years after then, I felt like I was in this like little bubble and I, I was kind of like oblivious to lots of little things that went on so if a problem came in I just didn't really attach myself to it I just seemed to sort of float past I mean now I, I kind of a bit more aware of things which is probably a good thing really but yeah it, 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 it's it's just beautiful to start to feel that alignment and just to touch in with it because it's like you've come home that's how I can maybe explain it it's like you've come home that's so, so beautiful and so, so powerful. So I have one question for you because um, that was a beautiful explanation of your experience. And I think a lot of people, you know, follow a similar path. For my audience, it's a little bit different. And I just want to check in and maybe get some feedback. So for my audience and for me, you know, math and science were a very natural thing. And following that path and getting into a career where I could use to the right. Can you hear me now? Uh oh, are we a little hung up for a bit? We'll wait for a moment. Are you back with me? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Thanks for your patience. So I don't know what you said, what you heard. I'll repeat is that, you know, for my audience and for me, you know, math and science was a natural skill. So getting into a STEM career was very a natural progression. And you would think and hope that people with those skills have a, I'll, I want to say a clear path or a more conducive path to allow that career to naturally unfold. But what uh, women in some male dominated industries find is that this there's that's when that this world comes in and starts to put on these layers and starts to tell us that we're not supposed to be that kind and we're not welcome in these areas and we shouldn't be doing these things. Um, so yeah, so any kind of, you know, um, tips or tricks, you know, because that's a different kind of alignment, but actually at the core, it's kind of like well, the same thing. It's kind of the same thing, really, um, because what, you know, as you're explaining it, you're in um, a very male dominated world. And so you've got all those conflicts that you're coming up against. And, you know, men can be very, you know, this is this is my world, you know, and you um, yeah, your, you know your strength, you know who you are, yeah. you know your power, yeah. but you're not actually feeling like you're... The outside you're, influences. Yeah, yeah. that, that you, you're being recognised for this. Aligned. And, and, this is, and, and aligned, yeah. yeah. And actually, what can happen, I mean, I work with the chakras, and I don't know whether your audience does, but we've got the seven chakras, which are the energy um, centres of the, the, the vortexes in the body, 
and they all need to be flowing equally um, so that everything will be in the aligned and it's emotionally, spiritually and mentally and physically, yeah, or four, four aspects for each one. Your throat chakra is your voice, yeah, and how you put yourself out there. Now, if you're working in a male-dominated world or, and you know inside that your idea is good and the way that you're doing it is good, yeah. but you go into some boardroom and you've got this guy that's saying, no, 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 you know, what's, you know that's not right, and you can start to lose a sense of your, your own power, which is from your voice. And this is why a lot of people find it very hard to, to speak out in meetings and things like that, because they're not in alignment with their, their throat chakra, because yes. the, that, that power has been taken away from them, really. Exactly. Or they feel, feel or like they, it has. Right, they feel like it has. And I think- They feel like it has, yeah. Kind of similar to your story, that was a story too, that I had to figure out in my career how to navigate the influences that are trying to tell me to get out of alignment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So like you're saying, even with that voice, that's a great example, you know, the throat chakra being out of alignment. So, you know, we feel more constricted and maybe we're not flowing that energy. Um, what would you, what kind of advice would you give somebody who's struggling to find their voice in that kind well, of system? I would, first of all, um, I would do like say a meditation with myself and talk to myself to tell me that I am in the right. And I know my voice, it's not that your voice is always right or wrong, but if it's right for you, then it's right. Okay. It's, it doesn't have to be right for everybody, but your opinion is right. So you, 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 solar plexus here just underneath the ribs um in that little space there is like where you get your your power your drive your determination your fire your grit you know you you go get in so you could sit with this first and put your hands over it just very gently you don't have to press into it but literally just hold just very gently and just breathe into that area and start to feel like i would almost visualize a wheel turning so that, like if there is any blockages you're willing these blockages to to just run out basically yeah and if there's a, a very strong idea that you've got that you're working with you can put that into the solar plexus and just feel it strengthen and build up fire and build up heat and build up momentum and keep working with that working with that until you feel you know just a few minutes or so eyes closed sitting straight you can then move up to the heart chakra, which is your feeling center. So you put the hands over the heart and just really sort of then put those feelings that you've built, built up and the thoughts that you've built up into the heart. So you're feeling it and you're knowing it. Yeah, it goes in. Then after you know a few breaths or a few minutes, however, then you move up to the throat. Now, I don't put one hand over the throat and then the other, but I turn the hands so that the um, wrists cup just very gently. And then you just put the fingers around, so around the neck, but you're not holding the neck. You're not trying to uh, like this, but you know, you want it to feel comfortable, but it's basically, you, you'd literally just, you know, a couple of millimeters in front or just touching just very gently. Now, this is very powerful to hold around here. So you sit and you close your eyes and again, feel that wheel turning or just, just, just feel that, energy that you want to feel in there you know the power that you want to feel the idea that you've got the voice that you want to have out and come out to the world or come out into that board boardroom wherever you're going with it and just feel can you feel that already I mean I can yes. actually feel sleep building up there Claire, right? I am doing this and this mm. feels amazing yeah and then just put the hands together when you've finished you can feel actually the heat in the hands then and your thumbs just touching to the heart and you can just say, that, you know, thank you very much for helping me in this situation. And so here you're talking to the universe or whoever you want to, you know, pray to. I, I, I pray to the universe, my guides and angels, but you can, you know, everybody's got their own gods. So, cool. and then that's it. That's pretty awesome. So that almost was a quick and easy little 
exercise that we can like, you know, if we're feeling stuck or if we're trying to prepare for a meeting where we yeah. think that might be a challenge that maybe we go to the, the ladies room, maybe just. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, it's something that you can do just, you know, if you're feeling a bit breathless or something, you can step out of the situation. I mean, to be quite honest, if you couldn't even step out of the room, you could almost just do that. You know, oh, nobody would really notice too much if you room. did it. Yeah. You could even just put the hands into the solar plexus and nobody's really going to notice if the table's there. So, if you know, if you're feeling stuck, it's just basically once you start to work with your own inner energy, it starts to just draw back in. And, and also as well, you it, it's very important to keep the breath slow. If you start to panic about a situation that you're in or, you know, oh, they're going to overpower me, da 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 just like, no, I'm, hang on a minute, I'm going to step back into my own power. I'm, I'm taking responsibility for this and I'm, you know, I'm stepping into my own power here and then just slow the breath down, get yourself back in and, you know, do the hands if you want, if you feel like you can and then you're good to go. You're good to go and... <laughs> good to go. That's so awesome. Cool. And maybe before we close out, maybe we can do a quick breathing exercise. Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. And if you don't mind, I'll get into a couple questions and then we'll bring it back to some great exercises. Um, cool. Thank you so much for that. That was fabulous. So there are seven defining characteristics of an everyday heroine. I guarantee you that you meet all seven. Um, one of them is that you're a real human person. And because you're on this podcast with me, talking with me now, clearly that is true. You are not a fi fictional character. But <laughs> But tell us, Claire, who is your favorite fictional superheroine? Um, if you I have one, that, maybe you don't have one, and that is. Do you know what? I find that I find that really, really hard to answer. Um, I because I I go through different phases, really. So I I just find that really. I, if I don't name names, but the type of character that, ah, yeah, that I am better. more drawn to, I, I would prefer to do that if that's okay. Oh, yeah. I like... Um, or what, what if I said spiritual being? Or what does... Yeah. What, what lands for you? Oh, crack us open. It's very judgmental for me to ask this I, kind of question, so... Are you there? Oh, we might have hung up. Um, Maria, I think the, um, it just broke out a little bit there, so it was very hard to hear. Okay. Yeah. We're back again. So I don't know where we left off, okay, but sorry. if I, um, yeah, because, you know, even in my questioning, you know, my questioning certainly can kind of put us in a box or creates, are you there still? Uh oh, I'll wait. It looks like you froze. I keep moving just to see. I'll know when I can hear you. You may be coming back. <gasps> there you it's, are. It's completely um, frozen, Maria. Oh, yeah. I see you now. Oh, yeah. Yay. Okay. All right. You ready? Yeah. Okay. So um, do you need to ask the question again? No, I should okay. answer something. Oh, well, you can answer. I don't know. Um, Cause I said a bunch of things. So There's a I, lot of that just completely frozen, but um, hopefully you can edit that out. I can edit that. Um, yeah. But I do it just want to coming up to say that my internet is unstable, but I've, I've got like really strong internet here. I don't understand why that's happening. But it happens to me sometimes on Zoom. I think Zoom kind of just needs to you know, yeah. kind of catch up or something. And I can yeah. edit it out. So don't worry. Yeah. Um, the type or style of women that um, I'm very drawn to that that um, I'm, that inspire me. Uh, very strong women. I like women that are very strong as themselves. What does that but, mean? Like physically strong? Well, not well, physically strong, yeah, but but people that um go for the life that they want. 
that don't hang back and just think, well, I wish that I could do this and I wish it, but I can. You know, I'm, I, I, I'm inspired by women that just really go for the lives that they want. But if I can say the women that I'm not inspired by are people that um, just, just work for money and just work for uh, material things. I just prefer it um, that it's more for, for the insight and being a, an authentic, nice, kind person that gives out and shares to other people as well. And that, that's just kind in, in, in their ways. Um, and then, uh, you know, I've got nothing against people having money. I've got, you know, I'm a very driven person. I've worked in business since, I've had my own business since I was 19 years old. So I'm not wanting to live in a, a hut and, you know, live a sort of Spartan life at all. Um, but to do it in a, a, a way that's kind, and to share out to other people as well with your knowledge, with anything that you can share, just to, just to make the world a better place. That's, that's really my answer for that one. I love it. And thank you for such a genuine answer. So number two is she goes against the status quo to make the world a better place. So what would that mean for you? Well, I feel that the status the, the term status quo is uh, a way that's almost like quite controlling for people. It's almost like it puts them in a box, in a mold. And um, so then they have to follow a certain path that's right, you know, the, the way that society is kind of edging you towards. And so in my way, I, I like to help to draw people out into being just who they are and what their path is. So not what you're meant to be doing, but how it sits right with you just so that you feel that right person. Yeah, that is beautiful. Uh, yeah, just so that people are just so that people have been themselves and um, just just feel right. That's yeah. that's because a lot of times, is. yeah, like the status quo is just going along with whoever the the latest and greatest, you know, popular person or influencer is blazing their trail and they just see yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's how things work in general. And, and uh, you know, everybody sort of tends to follow along in a little way. But if you can just try to sort of like really find what's what's your right, right passion inside. And, and then I think that life just becomes a lot easier that way. And happier, you know, I and mean, who doesn't want to be happy? This is our birthright is happiness. Yep. I love <laughs> to say that. It, you, life is meant to be enjoyed. Yeah, exactly. You know, we're not here to just trudge along like little sheep and just, just follow this path, you know, regardless of, you know, we need to have fun. We need to be happy. We need to feel right. And yeah. yeah. So how would you answer uh, the question about... Uh, your call to greatness through your skills and talents, what are they? Well, my, what, how I work, what my work is, I'm a yoga teacher and I teach meditation. My style of yoga is from more of a spiritual side. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's still good, you know, not work out as such, but you know, it's powerful yoga, but I work, um, a lot with the breath, aligning, aligning people with their breath, the mind, the body, the soul, just everything coming together. Um, I do obviously a lot of meditation. I'm also a Reiki master as well. So that's energy healing, which is a really beautiful treatment to do. Um, I've traveled out to India a lot since becoming a yoga teacher because I run retreats out there when we can actually travel out there. Um, I've traveled around India quite a lot, but Richakesh, which is in the north of India, is absolutely my favorite place in the whole wide world. And when I was there, the, um, the last time I think it was, or the time before, the time before, I was lucky enough to meet this really great teacher called Sanjay that trained me in the sound healing bowls, the Tibetan bowls. So I also um, do that as well. So when I do private clients, I will combine the treatments. I don't just, you know, we don't just book in for yoga or book in for meditation. Basically, I'll, I'll kind of turn up and, you know, we'll have a chat about where their issue is or what their problem is. And then I'll suggest 
well, I, I'll, I'll tailor the, the treatment for, you know, we could do some meditation day today, some breathing and some sound bowls, you know, or it might be this, that or the other. And so we just literally just mix and match. And um, what I do with that is I also run workshops as well. So I'll do workshops and I've done whole day workshops or sometimes just two hour workshops, just what, whatever. And a whole day workshop combines everything and it's blissful, absolute blissful. And the students that come along to that are always so lovely as well. And I would I said, imagine, I wish I yeah. was in England. <laughs> I'd well, right the, the, day, the day workshops are almost like a week's retreat and you take all the best bits out of it and condense it into one day. And so it's quite a lot of work putting it together. To be honest, though, I, I do a lot of preparation before, but on the day, it's almost like any notes that I've made just go out of the window and it just something just got, I do my little prayer at the beginning, you know, ask my guides, angels, masters to assist me to deliver this workshop to the best of my ability to, you know, to give to the people what they want. And then suddenly this other sort of workshop forms out of that and it's, it's, it feels so magical. It's so good and uh, very enjoyable as well. That's so. pretty awesome. So that leads into, cause that's a lot of skills and those are pretty awesome skills. Certainly, you know, one of the things I've been talking about lately on each of my podcasts is I'm trying to introduce a peace practice and you are just bringing an arsenal. You know, you're actually stepping us through uh, several little mini uh, peace practices, uh, yeah. but the work that you do in with the world and for the world um, has some pretty awesome skills. So there's one that says works towards self mastery, 10,000 hours in the same, I'll say it's so the same domain, whatever that uh, means for you. And 10,000 hours translates to if you did it 24 hours a day, that'd be about 1.2 years. If you did it five hours a day, it would take you five years to put in 10,000 hours. And if you did it one hour a day, it would take you 30 years to put in 10,000 hours. So you do a lot of work over, you know, um, a period of time. What is your self-mastery? Um, do you mean in like how many hours am I actually doing myself or what am I doing to? Or even in your business. I mean, you know, this is your, not only your business, but you practice meditation and you teach meditation. Well, I think, I think what it is, Maria, is this becomes, it's my business, but it's a way of life. So yeah. basically it's almost like when I'm teaching, I'm almost learning a bit as well. It's, it, I don't like to put my, obviously I am a teacher. Even, but I, I also feel like I'm the forever student as well, which is, and I really want to be as well. When I, when I first started on this journey, um, I remember I sat there one day and I just thought to myself, this was after that second retreat. I thought to myself, I really want to continue with this journey because I've touched on something so beautiful. I don't want to, I don't want to step back. I don't want to go back. I just want to keep moving forwards, move forwards. How can I, how can I keep this going? How can I keep, so that I have the, the feeling of the presence of my angels and guides with me every day, walking me through, you know, and, and how can I deliver this out to other people as well? And I said to myself in this sort of like meditation, I want to be a sponge and take in as much as I can in, and please bring me the teachers that I need to learn from the most. And I feel like that's almost happened because since then, I don't know, I seem to just stumble upon these teachers, like say Sanjay, I said when I went to Richard Kesh, um, you know, I just happened to go and have a treatment and I loved this treatment. It was so powerful. I mean, it blew my mind that, you know, I chat, chat, chat. The next thing I'm inviting him to come and work on my retreat when I'm out there, run workshops for my students. Then I trained with him to do that so that I can bring it back here. And, um, and I, I seem to just stumble upon these people now. It's almost like they come to me. And I'm not, I, I, it's like, um, it's not like I'm addicted to learning. It's just, it feels so good to keep adding more of this, more of this, more of this, more of this. And, you know, I'll probably add different styles of 
you know, on top of the Reiki, the sound healing, the this and the that, I'll just, I'll just keep going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, right. So it's almost like you're building a repertoire. So it's easily probably, would you say you've got 10,000 hours of yoga in? Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Meditation yeah. and then yeah. Reiki. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. So that's, yeah. and so each of those are an individual mastery, but it almost creates then, um, I do like the word energy healer, right? So, yeah. so it's almost like above this, you, you really become super masterful in like a realm where you yeah. have these, these other masteries. Yeah. I just like being yeah. with you because yeah, like I said, like I just gravitated toward you because you just have, you know, um, very, very positive, you know, soothing energy. Yeah. Well, it's funny because I feel a, a slight contradiction as well. When you ask about being the real person, like I'm actually a really real person as well. I'm living in London. I've got two kids, you know, I'm chasing out doing this school run, this, yeah. that and the other. But the times that I'm by myself, I don't want to be chasing around. Da, 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 da. I, I, I'll just, I can sit here for two hours and just sit and just meditate or, you know, I'll do a yoga class and then I'll say, I, it, it, to me, it's not like, oh no, I've got to do my yoga today. Oh no, I've got, it's yeah. like, that's what I want to do the times that I've got the time. I had a week off without the girls at the end of July and um, it was it was still very difficult for us to travel from the UK. Oh. So I, I signed up online to do a body meditation online course, which was, well, I can't remember how many hours it was, but it was from nine in the morning until seven, seven or eight in the evening. Wow, I mean, so you've got a gap in the in the middle of the day, but in that gap, I would do a, 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 an online yoga class just to sort of, so it felt like I was doing a full on retreat. Oh my gosh, I felt so magical at the end of it. I mean, really, it was amazing. Yeah, really good in a good way. So it was a lot of time, a lot of doing, but still feeling light and energetic. Yeah, um, light and energetic, but I think what happens when you do something like this is you start, say, at the beginning of a seven-day retreat, actually this one was eight days, the first day you kind of start and you're all bushy-tailed and, oh, you know, and everyone's a bit sort of excited and chattery, and then as you start doing the meditation, you know, the whole point of meditation is to go inwards, it's to get your head so, you know, you don't, you don't want to switch that off, but you want to switch the thoughts off of this chit, 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 chit. Oh, we should have been doing that. What do you do, 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 do? Oh, and then this and then that. And it's to switch that off so you can then draw inwards and then you're sitting with you. You're sitting who, yeah. who you are. And I'm sure you might have experienced this when you did your retreat in Costa Rica in, um, was it in May or something. You did your lovely retreat. Um, but what happens is... As you start sitting with yourself, you then you, you, your real problems that are, you push away, push away, they start coming out. And then this, oh, and, and you start to actually go a little bit down to start with because you need, to, you can't just always be up and keep moving forward. So you've got to right. take the crap out first. Mm. Sometimes yeah. you have to dig really deep and get in and get in and get in, get it out. And then you can then start to come out and then you feel that's when you start to really feel really good. So whenever I've actually taught retreats as well, this is what you notice. And I'll tell my students, you're, you're going to come in, you're going to go along, you're going to go down. So say we do Saturday to Saturday by Wednesday, please expect that you're going to be feeling pretty <laughs> you off. We're hitting you know, the low. in your room and crying and really emotional. And you know, God, why did I come on this retreat? I thought I was meant to feel good and I feel the worst I've ever felt in my life. But then, you know, the next day it's kind of like, mm. yeah. and then, you know, and then you come up and it, it's just beautiful because you're taking it out. You're taking the, the stuff yeah. out that needs to come out. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know if I shared with you, uh, you know, 10 years ago, I started a meditation practice. And what happened for me, you know, well, one, you know, I did a couple of different things, you know, I, and I, I did a couple of retreats, just, you know, went into classes and then one of the instructors basically suggests that I need to do a thousand hours basically to kind of build up enough muscle, I guess, oh, yeah. kind of like what you're talking about. No, it's true though. Yeah. Yeah. You need to get enough in you. So you, you, yeah. you start to get experienced mm -hmm. and to get over that hump. Um, so maybe somewhere, and I wouldn't even say the full thousand hours, maybe about 500 hours in, and this is over years because you know, I started out only five minutes a day. That's, 
that's all I can yeah. handle, well, right? You're just touching on that there, right? Your five mm-hmm. minutes a day doesn't really. And then each day, I, you know, he recommended that just add five minutes. So I would start at five and then 10, 15, and then eventually I was up to an hour. And then once I was up to an hour, I could do an hour a day, or, you know, if I missed a day, you know, maybe five days a week. So what I found was really telling was the time where I got to that point and I was practiced enough to go inside and to sit with myself. And I started to notice the voices. Yeah. And it was a point where not only just I noticed the chitter chatter and, you know, because there's tons of voices at first, right? They never stop, yeah? <laughs> and they never stop, but then- And one, one takes point, over the other one and then the other one. And then they, oh, it's exhausting. So, and at, at one point there was a particular voice that I, I that must have just struck a nerve. And I think that was that point where I, I, I finally got to that point that maybe a, a, a bottom point and I started to realize, oh, that is something that I can choose to pay attention to or not. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, you know, I finally kind of, I think, you know, developed um, the practice to get myself you know, to a different place. But yeah, it's very, very wow. telling. Very, very, very good. Telling. Can I can I maybe share a tip with um, your listeners and obviously with you as well? Please. When, if anyone comes into that stage where they're, you know, meditating and they start to sort of feel and listen, you know, these voices, you know, telling you something. And sometimes it can be quite painful, you know, what, what's been said or what you need, you know, we have that sometimes a feeling, if you're feeling pain, you actually can feel it as well, rather than just try to think, oh, I'm going to push it out of the way, go the opposite Mm. and invite it in invite it in and give it some airplane, give it some time and even speak to it and ask, because I, I work with Reiki, but I also do transformational healing and it's about listening to the problem and then taking it out. So I would just say, you know, what is it that you're trying to tell me? Or what is it that I am needing to learn from this? Because there is usually a lesson from something that's going on inside. You know, if there's something really bugging you constantly, constantly, it's bugging you until you listen and then you're yes. doing something about it. it's not just bugging yes. you so that you'll carry on with it and yes. just carry on with that path so you need to listen what is it that I need to learn from this am I needing to change something to move forwards and listen and then and then go with the advice of whatever you might and, and sometimes you don't know if you haven't done a lot of meditation you might not hear a voice saying oh yes you need to do this but you'll get a sense or a feeling or suddenly or you could say as well, this is another thing is, okay, I, I, I can't hear what you're trying to tell me or I'm not feeling it, but could you maybe just put me in the right direction or onto the right path and I'll, I'll honour that and then just wait and see. And you'll notice, you know, bit by bit that that will start to take form. Yes. So, Thank you, you for that. And that is why, you know, I'm more of a student in the realm and thank you for pointing that out because it is, it's such a path and there's so much to learn. And sometimes yeah. it can be challenging to understand through that process, especially as you continue the practice, what to do with all this. Well, I think as well, it's because a lot of the time we're thinking from our head, you know, we're, we're conditioned to think from our head, but if you can try to just step into you know, your soul, your essence, who you really are and think from there, then that will send you to what you, what you need to do, where you need to go. Yeah, cool. Thank you. So it sounds like, uh, well, let me just ask, what do you have the freedom to explore with your passion and purpose in life? Um, I would say it is just feeling right inside. And trust me, once you feel right inside, that feels like you don't have the shackles. You know, you don't have anything that's holding you back. So then you'll just move forwards and do the things that you really want to do. I mean, I live now my life. I do exactly what I want to do, but not in a selfish way, because I don't come from that sort of angle. But I don't not do things just because I feel like I shouldn't. 
I shouldn't do that because so I might not have the money for that or this, that. I make sure that I can do things as I want to do them. And I think there's always a way. I hope I hope that answers that right, but that's that, just... I- that's just how I feel really yeah Yeah. because I know how I used to feel before I mean as I said I did have a a nice life before and and you know in many ways I've 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 been extremely lucky but inside I just felt wrong you know insecure if I would go to a party for example you know in a nice place in London um even though I had a, a very successful business at the time, I was making a lot of money and I could dress well at the parties. Somehow I never felt, I always felt on the outside. I never felt like I'd have the confidence to go and, even though I'm a very confident person on the outside, inside sometimes I'd feel a bit like stuck in certain situations. And I'm sure we can all relate to that. Whereas now, um, I probably don't make the money that I used to make before. Or maybe I do, I don't, I don't really measure it by that anymore. It's, but inside... I I can walk into a room now and I can hold a conversation with people and I feel absolutely right about what I'm saying. Even if it's not always right, it's right to me because I don't feel like I'm I'm locked in anymore. And I like to refer to that. That is freedom to me. Yeah, I like to refer to that as you're rich in experiences. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not no longer from a materialistic or an external standpoint. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're you're kind of just feeling rich and and um and being a human. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Any notable accomplishments or achievements? I mean, you kind of like listed a ton already with, you know, Reiki and and yoga. Anything Um, that you would. I think the things that I feel really proud about are the retreats that I've taught in India, especially now since we've been in, um, not been able to travel to India for like 18 months. I feel the thought of organising people from central London, or so there were some people from outside of London, but organising a trip that gets people out. Some people haven't even been to India or even out of the, there was one person that hadn't been out of the UK, for goodness sake, you know, and then, you know, putting them in the Himalayas in this place and, you know, teaching them out there and organising local teachers to come in and do workshops and different stuff. I mean, when I look back now, I mean, that felt quite normal at the time, but now because it's out of reach, it feels like, wow. (laughs) And actually, I cannot wait to do that again. That's like top of my list. Yeah, um, what a gift. I, I mean, I'm, I'm also really, I, you know, I, I feel proud that I, you know, stepped into my own power when I was 19. Um, I, I bought my own business when I was 19 because I didn't like, I noticed at 19, I didn't like working for anybody else and being told what to do. And I thought, well, I'm going to have to, <laughs> I'm going to have to sort that one out. And I got the opportunity to buy a, a business I didn't have that much money behind me, but somehow I scrambled around and put it together. And and, um, and then obviously I started making money. So I was, I was okay and I could buy a car. And I feel, I look back now and I think, wow, you know, 19 and I could do that. That is pretty, yeah. Um, Good for but, you. Yeah, I think, I think that we're extremely lucky in life. We have a lot of opportunities out there. And I think that just being able to, find the right ones for you is is very good and and they're there for everybody because everybody nobody's more special than the other person everybody can really have the you know the the life that they want if they're they're very clear about what they want and how they want it yeah Mm. yeah that's awesome and then the last one is and I think almost everything that we've even talked about this whole time hints to this topic um, but shows evidence of transformation, you know, so how has life changed as a result of what you do for your clients? What you, I mean, your life sounds like you've had your own transformations, plus you transform your clients. Anything you want to add there? Um, well, there's no better feeling than being able to help people that are going through issues, you know, and, I find that, uh, that that's obviously more through my healing work, the Reiki work and the transformational healing. That's um, People don't tend to have that sort of treatment every week. That's something that they'll call upon you when they're going through a particular sticky patch in their life or just you know not feeling right and they're just needing a bit of a step up. So that is very rewarding when you start to see 
somebody start to pick up because you know you can see some people are in you know not in good places when you first start the treatments and um also i find that i've you know i've been able to build up a really good local community of of students as well and that are very loyal to me and a lot of those it's in my private work you know i see them on a weekly basis or group classes as well which have obviously changed it's changed a little bit over the lockdown how we've had to deliver that and you know I, I've not seen some of my regulars for a while because they might not have liked the zoom classes but now we're getting back into real classes and it's just really nice to sort of see that all sort of building up and people's happy faces when they when they finish classes they people yeah. genuinely seem to get a lot out of yoga as well which is what it's all about so it's just really nice being able to to share that and to deliver that yeah that's awesome mm. cool. and I love people I mean I love oh. being with people as well so that's really nice and, and everybody's got their own story and it and and it's just nice to be part of their journey yeah awesome so like I mentioned, um, I've been talking about peace practices, basically, you know, your whole essence and what you do uh, is a lot about peace practices. Is there a little breath work exercise quickie that you can share with us? Well, yeah, I've got several, but one that's a very easy one to do because I'm not sure of people's experience here. So let's do what I call the, the five breaths. It's just called five breaths, so anyone can remember that. And basically, we're going to inhale for five. We're going to hold the breath for five. We're going to exhale slowly for five. And then we'll do no breath for five. So no breath in the body. And then we'll repeat it again. Now, I do want to say that if, you, if you're pregnant, don't do this. Okay. Um, and if, if you um, have just eaten as well, I never like to do breath work on yeah. if you've just eaten. So just make sure that you're cleared like at least an hour or so of food. Sitting down straight is the way to go as well. So you don't want to be lying down for this. So you can be sitting cross-legged on the floor. You can sit on a chair. You can sit on your bed. It makes no difference as long as the crown and the roots are in alignment. So you're in a straight line. And... I will just quickly just to explain the benefits of why we're doing the five breath because it's, it's a pranayama, a breath work. And most people breathe too fast. When they oh. breathe too fast, they're, they're, they're thinking too fast and everything's running fast. It's at slightly higher speeds and it's, you know, they're on high alert, high alert. If you slow the breath down to say the count of five, then it starts to slow down the central nervous system. And when you slow down the central nervous system, the heart rate slows down to the rate that's right for it. And then when you do that, the mind automatically slows down as well. So therefore, you're coming into more of a meditative state, that calmer state, without you even having to sit there and think, I need to calm down, I need to go. So this just automatically does it. So if you do this, say, I don't know how much time we've got, so we could do, say, three rounds, or we could do five rounds, um, Let's and we do just three. Through, we'll do three because then if anybody wants to continue with it, they can then they know they've been set and they can just do it. So we'll do three. I'll get you set off and then okay. you can continue from there. So take the seat nice and aligned, crown and root, drop the shoulders from the ears, relax the jawline and close the eyes. Just take one deep breath in through the nose and fill up the belly with breath. And on the exhale, I want you to open the mouth and just really feel like you're releasing. Now seal the lips. Inhale one, two, three, four, five. Hold the breath. One, two, three, four, five. Exhale softly through the nose. One, two, three, four, five. No breath. One, two, three, four, five. Inhale one, two, three, four, five, hold, one, two, three, four, five, exhale slowly, one, two, three, four, five, no breath, one, two, three, four, five, inhale, one, two, three, four, five, hold, one, two, three, four, Five. 
exhale, one, two, three, four, five. No breath, one, two, three, four, five. And then just allow the breath to come back. But try to keep that inhale for five. But then no pause, just exhale for five, softly. And just have a little check in with yourself all around and just check that all the muscles feel easy, relaxed. notice the mind you can step into the mind and just if you've got any thoughts in the mind just sit with the thoughts don't try to push them out just sit and then place the left hand into the heart center and the right hand over the top sending gratitude to the universe for the heart that you've been given this gift that you were given that you didn't even ask for you were just given this beautiful heart to give you your life and then close the hands in prayer namaste thank you thank you claire that was awesome and that is a perfect short little exercise yeah that anyone can take with them anywhere they go yeah, um, pranayama is particularly good to do in the morning. Um, and actually at the end of the, well, you can do them anytime, but it's good in the morning to just really sort of touch in before you then set off for your day. So, yeah. Very cool. And this is why I take classes, you know, because what you do mm -hmm. and the knowledge that you bring has obviously a strong expertise. And I, I appreciate, you know, what you do for the world. I usually am just a, I'm a student. <laughs> <laughs> so am I. <laughs> cool. Thank you. So as we bring the episode to a close, what can you share with the world on what, how we can get in contact with you and anything new and exciting that you have to offer the world? I would love that you, um, because I think, it, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you are in England, London, England. Yeah. I and am. you know, I'm in the United States, but you do have some ways to do um, I'll say online courses or uh, even classes. Yeah, um, I've got online classes. I'm not sure whether the time's gonna sync with you though, because they're at 9:30 in the morning. Well, so I have some sure. some of our people um, do shift work. Yeah. Okay. Well, so you go, never so. know what time zone. But to be quite in. honest, though, I um, there's also a, an option for recordings as well, and a lot of people purchase the recordings if they can't make the live classes. So yes, um, I do morning classes at nine thirty, uh, Monday and Friday. I do these. Are, these are the group classes that people can join, and I do an evening class on a Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. So this is this is GMT time, GMT time, English time. And okay. um, so you'll have to work that out wherever you are. But if I give you my website, it's got everything on there. And then anybody that wants to connect, because there's also options for doing privates as well for you know whatever people might want to do. Or even if just people want to have a chat with me and just, you know, help. I, I'm open for people to have a 15 minute chat just to put them onto a track of wherever they might, you know, want to be going. It doesn't have to be necessarily with me, but if I can help them onto the track, that's that's fine too. So my website is um, www.claire, and I'm C-L-A-I-R-E, Wilkinson, yoga, dot co dot uk okay and, and I, just as a note i always love to include all the links in my show notes so i'll certainly okay include so include that to make it easy yeah. for yeah <laughs> yeah because yeah. um on on that there's my instagram 
that you can attach, you, you can um, connect, sorry, and attach to the Instagram bio is like, I've got like little free videos and I've actually got a free mini course that you can do when you sub subscribe for the um, website as well for the newsletter. So it's all on there. You can you can get it if you, if you want to connect, you can connect, there's plenty of ways. And I've also got, um, I have got a, a course out, Reconnect With You and Yourself, which is a four week digital course. That is really there's a clue in the title. It's about connecting with your inner self, and it's a it's it can be done at any any time over the, your four weeks that suits you. And it's basically just a combination. Each week you get sent um, yoga, meditation, some breath work, some um, talks. There's a holistic, healthy eating plan. There's um, there's there's all sorts in there. Is it, it honestly? It's, it's so good. So that's on there. But I'm something else that's really exciting that's happening. I'm working with my um, best friend Shakti, who lives in Koh Phangan in Thailand, and she has actually been my guide and teacher for many years, as well as being my dear friend. And we're starting to link together to do online courses, and together we've got 15 years of experience of this work together I mean it makes her sound really old but you know <laughs> she started really young <laughs> and um, our first course that we're launching it, it's going to be on manifestation and you know how to bring this into your life so that so you can manifest really the life that you want and um, we're, we'll just work through that I mean it's not out until January but I just wanted to throw that in just because it's it's very exciting so love there it. we go love mm -hmm. it love all that you do and looking forward to some of the new creations you have. And certainly it has been such a joy um, to have you on the show and uh, to experience some of the practices that you've been able to share. It really was a gift to spend the time with you, Claire. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And maybe we can have you on the show again in the future. Oh, absolutely. It's been it's been so lovely. And thank you very much for inviting me. And I think what you're doing, Maria, is uh, and everything that you're standing for is amazing as well. You're such a strong, strong woman and uh, really admire you a lot. So I'm, I'm very happy that we've uh, we connected as we did and we've become friends. So good luck to you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you.